last week received an email from somebody asking about the Hebrew Roots Movement. I think. Found it. Found the article that I had referred to from Answers in Genesis doing a very fine job of trying to put a finger on what is it with the Hebrew Roots Movement? What is its appeal? Why is this thing growing? And why is it dangerous? And as they rightly state, properly defining the movement a little difficult. There's there's no statement of faith that 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 it forms any sort of cohesive similarities among the different branches. There's no central hierarchy. There's no leader, no official statement of faith, nothing. And so you've got a bunch of people that are finding an audience. And I get it to a degree. I I I, I think it's that same thing that causes so many people to do the Ancestry.com business. I don't know what it is, but we seem to like the idea. Recently saw a commercial, I think it was Ancestry.com. The woman does the thing with the deal with the blood test, the deal, whatever, and it turns out her cousin is George Washington. Eh, okay. I, um, cool, I, I guess. What, what makes that so exciting to people that they find somebody... I, 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 for instance, I remember my aunt telling me, do you know that your ancestors signed the Magna Carta? No, no, I didn't. And even as a child, I just remember going, I, I don't need, I love you because you're my aunt and you know, you're right here. That's, that's what I'm interested in. But my great, 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 grandparents were maybe on a boat, maybe signed the Magna Carta. What, how does that change me? That's not my ancestry. That's not my heritage. My heritage, my ancestry is found in every believer who has existed throughout the ages. That is, that's, that's my heritage. I'm far less interested in bloodlines than I am in church lines. And yet so many people seem, to, and I don't think it's a sin, it doesn't have, it could be, I guess, um, that it somehow gives them a better feeling about themselves. They feel more important about their related to George Washington. I guess it could be a sin, doesn't have to be a sin, but there's something about knowing our ancestry. And I think that's the same thing, whatever that thing is, that causes so many people to want to be tapped into their Hebrew roots and to go back and practice Jewish things from the Old Testament. And this is a movement throughout the years that I've seen grow in popularity and I have never met, no, maybe there's one out there, but I've never met one person in the Hebrew Roots movement that didn't have theology that was outside of orthodoxy, that was wonky, that was Galatians land, that was a different gospel. And these movements, they're typically littered with these teachers who mangle the Bible like a nobody's business. So with that preamble, the danger of the Hebrew Roots Movement in response to an email sent by Bill to idea at wretched.org. Broadly speaking, followers of the Hebrew Roots Movement believe that all believers in Christ are obligated to follow Jewish laws and practices from the books of Moses. That, uh, that's a problem right there. Didn't we hear about them somewhere? Uh, we, yeah, you, you hear about them all over the New Testament. That's we're it. Not un, we're not under the law. Thank you. Now, do the precepts and principles carry forward? Of course they do. Hebrews, oddly enough, Hebrews 8, 9, and 10, how can they miss this? That covenant, abrogated, gone. Jesus fulfilled all righteousness. He, he kept it. He did it for us. We get credited with his activity with his obedience not our own in some gr some groups of the hebrew roots movement extra biblical rabbinical teachings and traditions are elevated if not in official doctrinal beliefs then in practice to the same level as exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy and ben shapiro does that dennis prager does that and further it's not just the rabbinical teachings from like say the times of moses the 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 the, the mishnah now, they love Maimonides from the 12th century. Love that guy. They quote Maimonides more than, the, than they quote Moses. Although they often speak of keeping the law, they are usually inconsistent. That's, that's very true. For example, certain laws are either broken or neglected, while a great deal of attention is placed on keeping the Sabbath and celebrating the feasts mentioned in Leviticus 23. And they fail to read Colossians 2, 16 and 17, if I'm not mistaken, 
Don't let anybody tell you about celebrating those festivals. Don't let anybody control you about the Sabbath business. Those were all types and shadows pointing to Jesus. Now that we've got him, we don't need those things. Every second of every day is a Sabbath rest for those of us who are in Christ. All of those festivals pointing to Jesus. We got them. We don't need them anymore. It is difficult to document the movement's history because of its lack of organizational structure. But it has been influenced in some ways by, you'll never guess, it rhymes with Seventh-day Adventism. And the Worldwide Church of God, during the time of its founder, Herbert W. Armstrong. I had no idea. But it makes sense, doesn't it, regarding Seventh-day Adventism and the Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath on Saturday versus on Sunday? Uh, uh, that's just not the pattern that we see with the early church. The early church, they assembled on Resurrection Sunday. Uh, they clearly broke from that. That was, their, that was their pattern of meeting. Furthermore, there was the understanding that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was pointing, pointing, pointing to Jesus Christ. Work hard for six days, little physical rest. Work hard for six days, little physical rest. It was a vague, fuzzy picture of the spiritual full-time rest we have in Jesus Christ. Every second is a Sabbath rest for those who are in Christ. Back to Answers in Genesis, it is not unusual to see some HRM proponents give themselves Hebrew names. Hmm. Oh, uh, Tony B., I'm just thinking. Tony, Joe, Yosef. Okay, so Joseph, you're, you're, you're easy. Yosef. Yeah. That's easy. Tony. Uh, I have no idea. An, Antarachni. Antarachni. That's a little long. And I don't know so much about the Yod at the end. Antarachni. That's Anthony in Hebrew. I don't know if you knew that. Actually, Hebrew names, they don't sound like anything in English. In fact, I don't think there's any words in Hebrew that sound like English, which makes it such a wonderful language to have to memorize. For instance, the the Hebrew name Nathan. Anthony. Nathan. Nathan. Well, that must have that must be from something that begins with the letter N in English. No, it doesn't. It means gift. Hear it? Natan, gift. They're so similar, aren't they? Anton Rachni. Anton Rachni. They identify as Torah observant. They write G-O-D as G-D, eat only kosher foods, claim that the New Testament was originally written in Hebrew, huh? condemn numerous Christian traditions as pagan, dismiss teachings from Paul's epistles. Some have gone so far as to challenge Orthodox Christian beliefs like the Trinity and even the deity of Jesus Christ. Well, that's a big problem, and that will put you outside of 2,000 years of Orthodox Christian tradition. Fundamentally, the HRM teaches that many modern Christian beliefs and practices were introduced to the church by pagan Greeks. And that is why, among other reasons, that the Hebrew Roots Movement is a big problem, and it stems in covenantal confusion. Their understanding about how covenants work. What was the purpose of the Abrahamic, the Mosaic, the New Covenant, the Davidic Covenant? Chief among these understandings is the notion that the law was intended to be binding on all people throughout history. And they cite a couple of Bible verses, but they fail to recognize that history happens in time. And when Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law, that doesn't mean that the law would never be abolished because it was when he fulfilled it. Because history happens in time. He wasn't doing away with it while he was alive. His life fulfilled it. The book of Hebrews tells us now that it has been fulfilled, it is gone. They get confused about that. And so it is that the Hebrew Roots Movement, it is a big problem. Not even the apostles believe that Gentiles should follow the Mosaic Law. Consider the First Church Council, Acts 15, 1 through 5. Do the New Testament epistles teach that Gentiles should follow the Mosaic Law? No, they don't. Read the book of Galatians. Try Romans 4. Try Romans 9 through 10. The Hebrew Roots Movement, it's growing. If you know somebody in it, preach the laws to them to help them understand, oh, no, you can't keep them. You need somebody who did. His name is Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, the second person of the Trinity. Repent. 
and put your trust in him, grace alone, faith alone, and Christ alone.